Welcome back, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed part one. If you haven't listened to it yet, make sure you listen to that part before we get into this part, obviously. Here is part two of our interview with Lincoln Castellanos, Tobias from Fear the Walking Dead. Definitely. <laughs> and uh, I've got uh, Kylie off of uh, Twitter. She asks, how would you uh, handle being in a real-life zombie apocalypse? Uh, yeah, that's everyone's... Uh... I think everyone secretly wants some zombie apocalypse to happen. Deep down, like I really think that, just so they could test their their scenarios. Oh well, I know what I'm gonna do. Uh, I've certainly said that too. I mean, I got a, I would have a backpack full of stuff like Tobias does, just ready to help me. Uh, first aid kit, gotta have that. Gotta have small, you know combat weapons, anything that could fit, you know, in a backpack or you can carry easily, have plenty of those, um, you know, clothing, uh, a tent or something. I mean, make it seem like you're going to go camping and you got a weapon on you at all times. That's how I would carry myself in an apocalypse with walkers. And certainly, you know, it's in my nature, you know, being good-hearted and, and, and kind to everyone. I think I would try to help out whoever I could, and at some point it would be very much a um, a test of, you know, how much can I do for these other people that I'm in, um, you know, encountering, because certainly that's a big part of the the world that would be if uh, you know a zombie apocalypse happens. You got all these other people trying to survive. You're not the only one. So do you reach out and lend a helping hand, or are you just gonna, you know, it's every man for himself? How far does that get you, though? You know. I don't know. But at the very least, you know, I got to have a backpack full of stuff, maybe some alarms and things to distract walkers so I could make a path for myself, uh, you know, some road flares, you know, anything to, to distract walkers so I could get past them. At the very least, I need that. Definitely. And I feel like um, with with your portrayal as Tobias, who was definitely one of the good characters on Fear of the Walking Dead, they 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 had nothing but good intentions. I feel like that would help too, because everybody would be like, "Hey, look, it's Tobias uh, from from that show." So we should trust him and bring him bring him in our group. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully, yes, yes, and hopefully Tobias is still smart enough to make an assessment of that group and see if he can truthfully offer something to the table, bring something to the table. Or if he needs to take a step back and, you know, think about whether he still needs to be on his own. Um, But certainly I wouldn't want my plans interfering with anyone else's plans and to suddenly forego and give up whatever I'm doing to join a group. Uh, You know, Tobias knows what he's doing. I think when we last saw him, that was pretty evident, especially with him saying no to Misty. Like, come with us, you know, we'll be safe. He's like... No, you got to take care of your stuff, but I'll, I'll be fine. You know, just give me some time. You know, I'm sure we'll see each other again someday. So I like that Tobias knows what's up. I really do. All right. I have uh, Miss Samantha Bowman off Twitter. Uh, she asked, are there any actors who inspire you? And the second part of that question is, uh, how do you use this inspiration in your own work? I've grown up watching... Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, Dustin Hoffman. I'm very old school in my in my list of inspirational actors. Certainly, that holds true still today. And more recently, in the last couple of years, I've been a huge fan of Joaquin Phoenix. I mean, ever since I saw him in Gladiator, I knew it was like, well, boom. If I could have a career like anybody, you know, besides De Niro, Pacino, Hoffman, Warren Beatty, yeah, it's going to be... Joaquin Phoenix, I admire the risks that he takes and the variety of roles that he, he's had, the pleasure of portraying, and certainly just having that boldness and that to, to have that risk-taking quality in work, that's something to admire and, and respect, and I certainly do respect his work as an actor, and I would love to work with him one day, someday, soon in the future. As as an actor myself, 
my hope is that I just continue to work and continue to tell great stories. If I'm lucky enough to work alongside some of the people I've looked up to my whole life, that's just a cherry on the cake. You know, I couldn't ask for anything more. But yeah, certainly Joaquin Phoenix. She also had another question. Seeing as how The Walking Dead has a ginormous, I guess is the the only word I can think of to describe how big the fan base is, uh, were you nervous at all about how fans would respond to Fear the Walking Dead? Honestly, I tried not to think about it so much because once you do start getting into the world and you start to see how ginormous, because you're right, that's the only word you use, how ginormous the the passion and love for the Walking Dead universe is, um, it can't help but feel a little overwhelmingly positive and, and amazing and awesome. So... I was just waiting until word came out about me being a part of the show to start to slowly take it in. And only when the premiere happened it did it start to become firmly realistic and, wow, I'm a part of a world that I have been a fan of for like seven, eight years. And I've been a fan of AMC for a long time. To finally be a part of those two worlds, put them together on the show, it's humbling. And then to have the fans respond so positively to Tobias, I mean, I couldn't have anticipated that. That's the truth. So this this ride has been all the much more enjoyable because of the fans, because of everyone messaging me and, and you know, just letting me know they connect with the character, they connect with him because you know, maybe their children or their friends, somebody they know is like him, and it's it's good to know that somebody like him can survive in a world as weak and as dark as this is becoming to be. Um, it's very gratifying. It's very gratifying as an actor, as a fan, as a person. I'm just very, very humbled by this whole experience. Vernon Newton runs the Walking Dead fan base, um, and he wants to know, while working on the set, uh, was there a lot of pressure to perform the very best due to the popularity and acting in The Walking Dead? There certainly was not any rushing going on on set for the pilot or the second episode. I don't think at all in, in this first season do you ever feel like anything is forced or rushed or half-heartedly put together. Um, my experience working on the pilot and the second episode were very much filled with nothing but support and love and, you know, good vibes from Adam Davidson, the director, from Gail Ducer, from from Dave Erickson and his great writing staff. Certainly, there is pressure being a fan of the show and then being on this show now, but I didn't let it get to me. I completely put it out of my mind because at the end of the day, I'm an actor. And all that matters to me is what's in front of me, who's in front of me. And that's Kim Dickens, and she's Madison, and I'm Tobias, and I have a goal. I'm trying to get something out from uh, Missy. Uh, I'm trying to get my point across that things are, things are happening, uh, bad things are happening. And all that matters to me in that moment is that I try to tell my story to her. And any actor uh, who ever thinks that they're going to feel pressure or nervous or anything, they should have put it out of their mind. All that matters is that you listen to who's in front of you and what's happening in the scene. And that's it. Nerves will go away. If anything, if there was any nervousness that happened, it just fed into how honestly nervous Tobias is being in that room with her, uh, having his knife taken away being threatened to get kicked out of the school. He is nervous. He's a nervous wreck. He's paranoid. So if there was ever any nerves of my own true self coming through, um, Tobias was there to just mask it and cover it up. The last fan question that we have is from Brian Daniels, and he just wanted to know, what was your first thought after reading the script for the first episode for the first time? Oh, man. This is going to be 
awesome. <laughs> Followed by the laugh. As soon as I read the ending, that final scene, I was just, I was flipping out. I mean, as an actor, you know, we, we always hope to be a part of an amazing project and to be immersed in a very diverse, colorful, honest world. And I really feel like I hit the lottery with Fear the Walking Dead. Dave Erickson, the showrunner, head writer, did such an amazing job with the pilot, working with Robert Kirkman, writing something that feels absolutely, completely separate from The Walking Dead. You wouldn't even know that they were connected if you never saw or knew about The Walking Dead. Um, it, if you had only just started watching Fear the Walking Dead, it's, it's, a, it's a look into, like I said before, the end of civilization as we know it. And to see everyone's paranoia uh, come out the way it does with Nick, trying to figure out if he's crazy or if he's just drugged out of his mind or what's going on, that, that's such an important part of that pilot that, that truly, for me, makes it memorable. And certainly I'm very lucky to have been a part of the pilot and have that scene with, with uh, Kim Dickens and having Tobias try to plea with her and to, to warn her to, you know, potentially save her from the doom that's coming. Uh, it's a very honest look into what can happen when the world as we know it suddenly changes for the worse. How would we react? You, you watch the pilot and you honestly have to ask yourself, is that so far-fetched? Is that that outrageous? Or would we truthfully not know what to do? Would we doubt it? Would we question it? We've never seen, you know, our neighbors suddenly try to bite us like that ever. So how do we take that all in? Certainly it takes a while to process, as the show has done a successful job at doing. You know, it's a slow burn, and that's what I love about the show. That's what I love about AMC shows. It's a slow burn, and people are going to be more satisfied at the end because then that that light is going to go crazy. The finale is going to be amazing. Uh, that's all i got to say about that. But in regards to the pilot, that was my reaction. I was so excited. I was so... Uh, I'm just honored. That's the truth. I'm honored. I'm blessed. I'm grateful for everything that the show has brought to me this year and for all the support from the fans. I, I love everyone for being Team Tobias. <laughs> All right. And, and that is, uh, is going to wrap up for the, the regular fan questions. Um, as you were stating, the finale is going to be awesome. By the time this podcast airs, the finale will actually be that Sunday on AMC at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So make sure everybody tunes in for that. Yes. And um, we'll get ready to do the, um, the Periscope questions. Great. Um, I'm getting ready to post that we are about to go live. And, and like I said, it'll, it'll wind up tweeting or it'll tweet out that we're live and then people will join and answer the questions. On the, or they'll post the questions and then I'll ask them to you. Uh, is, is this your first time uh, being on Periscope? Uh, yes, it is. I downloaded the app on my phone, but I haven't had the chance to set it up. I heard good things about it, and only recently did I start figuring out what it was and how uh, how handy it could come in, especially uh, with interacting with the fans. I think I'm going to have to start doing it. <laughs> I really do, just so I can see the, the questions and the support and love. You know, in real time, I think that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it is really cool. I mean, I'm... I'm still kind of learning a little bit about it, but I know it is a, a very good way to, to get in touch with people and uh, to have them to get some sort of immediate feedback on it. it it's pretty amazing. Yes, absolutely. They say, hi, Tobias. Hey. hey. <laughs> awesome. Uh, I heart my Mimi8 uh, wants to know if you would be her apocalypse buddy. Sure. 
I hope she's ready to to survive and uh, kick some walker butt. Nay says, hey, Tobias, are you hoping to get a longer knife? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I learned my lesson from that last encounter with Artie, and just note, i got to get a bigger knife, you know? Next question. <laughs> uh, Kat says, you have been so missed the last episodes. Where is Tobias hiding? <laughs> Well, I don't know. I don't know where he's hiding. I don't even, I don't even know if he is hiding. Um, who's to say he isn't already out of the city, out of the danger from the military? Um, but who's to say? I actually can't say. I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. Hopefully he's out there looking for a bigger knife. <laughs> Hopefully he's out there looking for a bigger knife. That sounds like a, a, a good thing, definitely. That says... Uh, that that was a great answer, and that she thanks you. Um, yeah, Renee said she was. <laughs> Renee says she, she hopes it was you hiding in the building, and you were the one killing walkers with the gunshots. You know that is a very interesting take on that that scene at the end. Uh, I certainly had a, haven't thought of it like that. I took it for what I believe everyone, the majority of people, did that whoever was in that building flashing, you know, SOS or help, um, they definitely got some bad news because the military came in and just blasted that room uh, because of Travis. I mean, people remember he went to the to the guy playing golf and said, hey, there's somebody out there, and look what happened. So to people hoping that was Tobias, I hope you don't think that anymore. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't think whoever was in there is is in good shape right now. Yeah, I don't I don't uh I don't think so either. And also, um Renee wants to know how did you feel to be cast on Fear of the Walking Dead? I felt honored. I felt very blessed. I was so happy. I mean, that week was such an amazing time for me and I think I said this before, I don't mean to repeat myself, but as an actor that's the best feeling to have to be a part of something that feels so special and so amazing as Fear the Walking Dead has felt for me. Um, it's AMC. It's, it's one of the best networks out there. Um, you look at their track record, Breaking Bad, Mad Men. Uh, they have all these amazing shows, not to mention, least of all, The Walking Dead. So to have been a fan of that for so long, it's an honor. It's an honor to be, to be on Fear. And to have it feel so special and different from The Walking Dead. That's what I'm most proud of. Dave Erickson and the whole uh, team did an amazing job. Uh, Anna says, The Walking Dead family loves you. Thank you, Anna. I love you, too. And uh, Renee says, Congrats on being invited to Walker Stalker Con, and they are hoping to see you at more events, such as uh, Philadelphia this week and uh, Atlanta and... Uh, Halloween. I'm looking, yes, Anna, thank you. Thank you, Renee. Uh, I'm looking forward to being a part of these convention experiences, and I'm looking forward to meeting and truly thanking every fan that I see. I mean, I couldn't be having this amazing time if it wasn't for the support of people like you. All right, and uh, I do have at Mahogany Stone. She asked, if Lincoln hadn't been cast as Tobias, do you think, or what other character do you think he would be playing? Oh, if if I, as myself, wasn't playing Tobias, who else would I be playing? Hmm. Yes. I don't know. I honestly, you know what? I honestly, I ha- I, ha- I sincerely haven't thought about that. When I left the audition that morning, that Friday morning, I I truly felt deep down that I had done the best job and I did the most to stay true to who I thought Tobias could be. And I guess I've always just felt that I could do Tobias and I could be Tobias and thank God I am Tobias. So I don't know who else he could be. I mean, you, you think about who's in the pilot, there's really no other character that's like him in that, that first episode, so I'm very glad about that. I guess I have to think about that more. I don't know. I'll get back to you. 
<laughs> All right. I mean, and Tobias is, is, is still a pretty amazing character. Um, and I think you, you, you definitely killed it. No pun intended. <laughs> thank, thank you, CJ. Thank you. Thank you, everyone who, who feels the same, really. Um, I'm so happy it turned out the way it has. Ah, I love Tobias. He's a good kid. Anna Dodson says, has anything funny happened while shooting? Any pranksters or gag reel material? <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of stuff for the gag reels uh, in the other episodes. Um, but certainly my time on set, it, it was very much, you know, very intimate because my scenes are all with, with Kim Dickens, with, with Madison. And I very much am like, uh, Kim, when it comes to just preparing for the scene, we just go over it a couple of times. We we quietly prepare on our own. We come together, go through it a few times, go through it with the director. Um, then when it's all said and done, and we wrap for the day, that's kind of when we you know let our uh, let our shoes unlace and just relax a little bit. Uh, Spice is a very serious character, and I think in that seriousness, you can't help but kind of laugh at, laugh with him, uh, especially in that scene where he's like, okay, Missy, yeah, you're right, can I go now? You know, there's some, there's a little bit of sarcasm in there that can't help but come out, so, um, I don't know, as far as pranksters and stuff, I've heard Frank Delane is kind of a prankster, but we'll see, we'll see when we, uh, get the DVD, huh, for season one. Definitely, and uh, let's see, I'll, I'll, we'll take one more question, and then we're going to wrap up with the interviews. Is there anybody who wants to post the last question? I've got Mahogany Stone again asking, uh, we talked about this a little bit earlier, but she was um, she's wanting to know where in the, uh, the original Walking Dead group, let's say Tobias makes it cross-country, uh, makes it to Alexandria, where do you think Tobias would fit in in uh, the Walking Dead world? Like, what role would he play? Well, everyone has already compared Tobias to the likes of Glenn and Morgan, and I would have to agree with those those uh, comparisons. I think very much, whether Tobias likes it or not, he is going to have to be a scavenger and, you know, hunter and you know, just collect things that he can find to protect himself. So he's handy like Glenn, and I think there's a quiet confidence in him, like like Morgan carries. So to to have fans come out there and say, oh, you know what, he's like the next Glenn, the next Morgan, it's very humbling. Because those are those are characters that I truly admire, not only in the show but also in the comics. So I think that's where I'd fit in, or at least that's who I would like to hang out with in in Alexandria. So you're saying there's there's a chance, a small chance, in a, in a future where there is a crossover episode that Tobias may have learned bow staff skills. Sure, I think if, and this is a big if. Tobias were to ever get over there to Alexandria, somehow he was compelled to leave the uh, vastness, openness of Los Angeles, California, with the oceans and the desert. If somebody compelled him to go over there in the forest with with Rick's uh, side of things, uh, yeah, he would definitely have a lot to bring to the table with Glenn and Morgan and certainly has something to offer them. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up for the live Q&A portion. You can check Lincoln out this weekend at Walker Stalker Con Philadelphia. So make sure yeah. you buy and, and say hey and get your pictures and your autographs. Uh, you'll have a great time. Yes, I'm looking forward to meeting everyone there. Thank you so much for the lovely questions and the support. Thank you. Is, is there anything you, that you'd like to promote? There, uh, well... I'm doing a, I did a movie uh, a while back that should be having a trailer come out soon, but 
I don't think I'm ready to, to, to promote that. But, I mean, if people go on my IMDb, they can see what else I've done and what else is coming down the pipeline. So I just encourage people to check that out. I definitely have some uh, stills and other pictures from on set and as well as my set and other projects on IMDb. Um, I have a little compilation of some of the Fear the Walking Dead scenes that I'm in up there too. So uh, I think that would just be it. Just, you know, encourage people to go check that out and they can find all that stuff on my IMDb page. And I just want to just wanna thank you again, man. It's been It's been awesome. And I do appreciate you joining our podcast. Absolutely, man. Thank you so much, TJ. Really, thank you for reaching out and inviting me on to speak with you. And uh, I had a great time, man. I mean, I it's, it's so exciting just to talk to talk about it, to hear myself saying these things. Um, hey, it's a blessing, man. It really is, and I'm happy to be on this ride. All right, everybody, thank you for listening in to both parts and our absolutely awesome interview with Lincoln Castellanos. We're going to have him back on the show at some point in the near future. As always, thank you to the fans for sending so many great questions. It was really hard to narrow it down to what we had. Uh, Keep sending in those great questions. Don't forget, we do have an interview with Sean Clark either at the end of this month, which is only a couple days left, or the beginning of October. We are going to be interviewing Sean Clark, so get your fan questions in. We're still accepting questions for him. So next week is going to be Denise Crosby and Andrew J. West, who you remember as Gareth and Mary, the, the Terminus residents from The Walking Dead. Make sure you tune in. It's going to be a great interview, and that's going to do it for us here on Creature Questions today. Once again, Alyssa will be back with us next week. So we'll see you then on Creech Questions. Hi, this is Chad L. Coleman, Tyrese from The Walking Dead. Hey, this is Danny Moore. Hey, y'all, Josh McDermott here from The Walking Dead. Hey, I'm Colin Moss. My name's David Morrissey. I play the governor on The Walking Dead. It's Lou Temp. I'm Scott Wilson. Michael Trenor. Hey, this is Lawrence Gilliard Jr. I play Bob on The Walking Dead. Hey, this is T Love. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's your man Vincent M. Ward. Hey, I'm Tyler James Williams. Hey, my name is Andrew J. West. I play Gareth on The Walking Dead. Hey, I'm Denise Crosby. Hi, my name is Ross Marquand. You know me as Aaron on The Walking Dead. Hi there, I'm Sarah Wayne Kelly as I was Lori on The Walking Dead. What's up, this is Jose Pablo Cotillo. Hi, my name is Emma Bell. Hi, it's Aniqua Martin-Green, Sasha on The Walking Dead. Greg Nicotero, Jeff Cobra. Alexander Breckenridge. Hey, it's Daniel Bonjour, I played Aiden on The Walking Dead. You're listening to Creech. 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 Creech.